Russia's nuclear doctrine urgently needs to be revised to allow a nuclear response to any major military aggression against the country, former Kremlin advisor Sergei Karaganov said. The former foreign policy advisor to the deputy head of the Russian presidential administration told the Commerçant Daily that the existing document is woefully outdated and no longer serves as an effective deterrent. Adopted in 2020, Russia's nuclear doctrine does not provide for preemptive nuclear strikes and envisages the use of nuclear weapons only in exceptional cases in the face of a threat to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. According to Karaganov, this approach has rendered it nearly useless and has effectively excluded the nuclear deterrence factor from Russia's military and foreign policy arsenal. We have allowed the situation to deteriorate to a point when our adversaries believe we will not use nuclear weapons under any circumstances, the political scientist said. Having nuclear weapons without being able to convince your enemies that you are ready to use them is suicide. A failure to have an effective nuclear deterrent policy would plunge the world into a series of wars that would inevitably turn nuclear and end up with the World War III. Karaganov believes, adding that this could happen within the span of several years. The main goal of a doctrine should be in convincing all current and future enemies that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons. His words came amid the continued Ukrainian incursion into Russia's Kursk region and Kiev's attempts to receive permission for the use of Western long-range missiles to strike deep inside the country. It is time we stated that any massive strikes against our territory gives us a right to respond with a nuclear strike, Karaganov insists. He also called on Moscow to clearly define the nuclear escalation steps in the next doctrine to leave Russia's adversaries no room for doubt about whether it is ready to use its nuclear arsenal and when. President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly demonstrated a more reserved position on the issue. Talking to Karaganov at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in June, the president said that Russia was not brandishing nuclear weapons and expressed hope that it will never come to a nuclear exchange between Moscow and the West. Moscow has no reason to even think about using nuclear weapons, he said at the time, calling on Russian officials to not even touch upon the subject of nuclear weapons unless absolutely necessary. Later in June, Putin also said that Russia did not need a preventive strike yet because the enemy is guaranteed to be destroyed in a retaliatory strike. He did not rule out changes to the doctrine though. Nearly 200 people have died in Vietnam in the aftermath of Typhoon Yagi and more than 125 are missing as flash floods and landslides take their toll, state media reported Thursday. Vietnam's VN Express newspaper reported that 197 people have died and 128 are still missing, while more than 800 have been injured. Most of the casualties were caused by floods and landslides in Vietnam's northern mountainous provinces. In the capital, flood waters from the Red River receded slightly but many areas were still inundated. In Hanoi's Tay Ho district, people waded through muddy brown water above their knees to make their way along one street, some still wearing their bicycle and motorcycle helmets after abandoning their vehicles. Local residents started to evacuate from Tuesday evening. Electricity and tap water has been cut since Wednesday. People who remain in the area waded through the flooded streets to collect food and other supplies while waiting for the flood waters to recede. Yagi was the strongest typhoon to hit Vietnam in decades. It made landfall Saturday with winds of up to 149 km per hour. Despite weakening on Sunday, downpours continued and rivers remained dangerously high. The flooding in Hanoi has been reportedly the worst in two decades and has led to widespread evacuations. The Southeast Asian country continues to suffer the consequences of the typhoon that hit the north of the country during the weekend, with rain and gusts of wind exceeding 150 km per hour. The flooding, unprecedented in decades, has reached Hanoi, where the Red River has forced the evacuation of hundreds of people. According to my Van Kiem, director of the National Meteorological Forecasting Center, the river has reached its highest level since 2004. At least 155 people have died in Vietnam after the passage of the Typhoon Yagi. Major flooding has also affected neighboring countries Thailand and Laos.